fresh round of raids across France as police search for the alleged mastermind of those coordinated ISIS attacks in Paris. For a moment, they thought they had the suspects surrounded. It turned into a deadly showdown, and ABC's Matt Gutman was right there. We're hearing multiple blasts right now. We're not sure what those sounds of explosions are several hundred yards down the road. We're in the middle of a terror takedown. There's another one. Police have been mounting their presence here as those explosions sound out. A raid, French police say, that neutralized the terror team on the brink of another attack. Just before dawn, gunfire and explosions. Anti-terror police firing nearly 5,000 rounds for close to seven hours. One video emerging just tonight, showing what appeared to be the first French SWAT team arriving. And entering the suburban apartment building. On the third floor, an alleged ISIS safe house. Police received intelligence through surveillance and cell phone data that the alleged mastermind of the terror attacks, 27-year-old Abdel Hamid Abaud, was hiding inside. They moved in using snipers, grenades, and assault rifles to crack open the reinforced door. But once police got inside, they were met with return fire. Then, a woman blowing herself up with a suicide vest. Lori and Sufian were jolted awake by the explosions. I heard shots being fired, which worried me. So I was looking left and right because there were cops everywhere who were blocking the street. And there were more shots coming from my left, the street that was occupied by the terrorists. Sabrine, another resident, lived just one floor below the safe house. We saw bullets, lights, laser beams in our direction. There were real explosions. We felt the building shake. She said she was hiding with her baby in the bathroom when she heard the terrorists from above. And there were guys upstairs screaming, shoot, shoot, there, there, there. They were talking, and the policeman as well was saying, reload, reload, quickly. Oh. This neighborhood with a large Muslim population locked down. Thousands shut in their homes, and this family shut out. We witnessed the tension boiling over when these two young men clashed with gun-wielding officers trying to cross a block street in the middle of the siege. Increase its presence. Clearly, they're very jittery right here. We arrived at the scene just after the shooting started. They continue to push us back because something is still going on back there. In this cell phone video, you can see suspects being led away by the SWAT teams, some of them stripped of their clothes. Ultimately, eight were arrested, one woman and seven men, including Jawad Ben Dawood, identified as the suspect's landlord. Before being led away, he told reporters he didn't know the men were terrorists, saying someone asked me to put the people up for three days and I did them a favor and it's normal. I don't know where they came from and I don't know anything. If I'd known, do you think I would have done it? Officials have yet to reveal the identities of the others, but confirmed they don't know the whereabouts of their number one target, Abaoud. Tonight, police combing the bombed out apartment, searching for clues and signs of the missing jihadist. You can see the forensics teams and their headlamps in that building. You can also tell how much firepower security forces poured into it, and we are here listening to it. Dozens and dozens of bullets, all those explosions, the top facade full of bullet holes, all the windows are blown out. Forensics teams going into an apartment like this are looking for fingerprints of other individuals who were not present when the raid occurred to see if they can find traces to other people. Uh, fingerprints, hair samples, uh, anything that would lead them to a broader network of contacts. It's all part of a major crackdown in France and Belgium. This raid, just one of over 400 since Friday's attacks, that resulted in 64 arrests. And tonight, French prosecutors revealing new intel. Texts from cell phones found in the trash outside the Bataclan Theater on one of those phones, a message to a member of the terror cell at 9.42 p.m. saying, we're ready, let's go. Intel that the U.S. will also be reviewing closely just tonight. ISIS issued a renewed warning against the United States. These images pulled from a propaganda video that appears to show an ISIS fighter with Times Square behind him.
This threat against New York City coming just 48 hours after a similar one against Washington, D.C. This city places great importance on the safety of New Yorkers and the almost 60 million visitors who will come to the city. We will not be intimidated and we will not live in fear. Paris already attacked. France forced to declare what President Hollande called a war against the terrorists. Marking day four of withering airstrikes on ISIS targets. Russia launching strikes of its own, already destroying numerous ISIS oil depots and command centers. The bombing started when President Vladimir Putin confirmed that a downed Russian jet in Egypt was the work of ISIS operatives. The terror group today proudly displaying an online post claiming this is exactly how they brought down that aircraft. A bomb in a soda can. They say they smuggled a Schweppes tonic can stuffed with explosives, possibly ignited by this small detonator with a blasting cap stuck down the can, wired to this, the switch with a timer hidden behind the black tape. It has the components necessary uh a power source, which is what we believe is wrapped up inside the tape, a switch to control the function, a detonator, and an explosive charge, which was in the can. The whole thing likely costing no more than $50. But bomb experts say it could be used to produce a blast much more powerful than the one in this government test, like the one that downed that Russian jet. U.S. aviation security officials say screening machines should be able to spot a soda can bomb like this, but there is concern that no security system is foolproof. Even with the best of security screening machines, if you have an insider who's willing to place an explosive on a plane, uh, you have a real problem. Security concerns that cast a long shadow from here to France. Tonight, Parisians continue to mourn the 129 victims who died in Friday's massacre as doctors race to treat the almost 200 still in the hospital. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Paris.